Hello everybody and welcome back to another video at Farfield Junction and yes it's finally here it's been long it's been a long time waiting but it's finally here the brand new GWR HST pack by Hornby containing 43002 Sir Kenneth Grange and power car 43198 oh, I just don't really know what to say obviously loads of people have been waiting for this for a very long time it's been incredibly sought after. I think it's sold out in quite a few places now, and I'm just so happy to finally have it here. I just really don't know what to say. It's just, it's going to be amazing to have her on the layout, to have her running around with the coaches. I have got some TTS sound decoders on the way for her, so she so she's obviously obviously she's currently DC, but she will be a digital TTS sound uh, eventually once the sound chips come. Now I haven't I, <coughs> I haven't opened her yet. And what I have, I have opened her just to check that she was all okay when she arrived. Uh, but I haven't taken her out to the box here or run her or anything. So I've only had a very brief look at her. But yeah, it's 43002 Sir Kenneth Grange. I'm sure pretty much everyone watching uh, know, knows her. And then we have 43198. And obviously these are the two power cards that ran on the GW GWR HST farewell tour. Which is probably why it's called first and last as well. As you can see, we've got 40, 40 years up here, 1976 to 2016, or well, they have been running, well, technically they did run for a little bit longer than that. They ran until 2019, really, on the Great Western Railway, but, yeah, very special HST pack. Uh, we can see it's DCC Road, like a, DCC Road, like I've already mentioned. And if we just flip it over, we can see we've got some nice information on the back, on the back here about the, just HST in general. I think there's also some information in here about you know, obviously these two with the farewell tour and everything. But I think we just need to get her open, get her open, don't we? So it's the typical Hornby HST packaging that we're all used to. It's a typical Hornby box with the sleeve and everything. Well, not sleeve, just polystyrene tray. And if we just lift this up, you can see we've got the typical instructions. HST, very important. I do recommend you read them. It tells you body removal because hit, removing these bodies is a bit is a, is a little bit uh, strange. So yeah, obviously, well, you do you remove the typical four screws, but then you have to lift it up and then uh, uh, basically move it forwards to get it off. And you can see she has got the typical eight pin DCC socket there, and that's in both power cars. And then of course you've also got the typical lubrication as well. So very important. Again, I do recommend you look through them. And then we've got the power cars. Now I'm just going to mention, I do have a few Lima HSTs, and here's one of them. And this is also Sir Kenneth Grange. Obviously, this one has been renumbered and and renamed and everything, so it's had the name plates and the numbers and everything applied. But obviously, I won't be needing her anymore. She is going to be going to a friend's uh, collection, uh, so I won't be. So I don't. She'll be with me for a little bit longer, but. She's now obviously now going to be replaced by obviously this one here. But as you can see, the Lima the Lima HST it, it it isn't bad. It isn't bad. It really is a nice model the Lima, the Lima one. Obviously, obviously the Hornby one is the best one. But then I'd say it's this one, and then the Hornby Railroad HST right at the bottom. Because the Lima models they they are really robust models and they are very very good. There's a lot there's quite a lot of weight to this model. The motor is obviously just this bogey here, but it's not a very bad motor it's pretty good uh, this one is also DCC I, I hardwire this one myself in fact if I just take the body off I can show you there you go you can see there the chip there it's a normal laser DCC chip and it's just hardwired in and that and once these Lima models are DCC they do run very well they are very very nice models and they will serve you very well for a very long, for a very long time but yeah Let's put that box to one side. Obviously, this is what we need to look at. So, if we just lift up the paper there, there she is. Right, try and be really, really careful. There we are. Let's check out the paper. And I'll just gently put her to one side now. And I'll put the paper back in there. And, oh, yeah, this is another thing. It does come. With etched metal name plates for both power cars, I think. Yeah, yeah, it does. 
you can see th those ones there, and then just underneath are the ones for Sir Kenneth Grange. If I try and get them spread out, but I don't think I can, but you can just about see underneath there some, some like, red underneath there. So I'm pretty sure, that, yeah, there are, yeah, I'm pretty sure there are uh, plates for both power cars. There, yeah, there you go, now you can see them, yeah. So you have got extra name plates for both power cars, and I should def definitely be fitting them. And then we have got these sort of cut things here. I think they're just sort of static cut things, don't really use them. But yeah, I'll definitely be fitting those name plates. Uh, we'll just put them back in there for now, just so they're nice and safe. And then I've got the dummy unit here. Power card 43198. Side. And then we can put the packaging to the side. And so we'll have a look at the dummy first. So this is the dummy car. It's 43198 as we can see there. And it's well it's just the typical Hornby HST. It's really, really nice. It's got a lovely gloss finish, uh, these ones. Uh, Kenneth Kenneth Grange seems to have a gloss finish as well, which I don't think is the best thing for it. But well, I suppose they're just done it just so it matches with the gloss finish of the other GWR power cars and the coaches, I suppose. But yeah, it's really, really nice. Not too heavy, not too light. And you can see we've got the names here. So we've got driver Stan Martin, 25th of June 1950 to 6th of November 2004. And then the other side, driver Brian Cooper, 15th of June 1947 to 5th of October 1999. I'm sure you're probably film I don't know if you're familiar with the two instant with these two incidents, uh, but they're quite probably some of the big biggest uh, and worst incidents on that that have happened on the Great Western Railway. But yeah, what is there to say? Typical Hornby HD power car. It's very very nice, very high quality in detail. It does have working lights, as I'm sure you probably know. So you've got two red lights there. Then you've got the typical three headlights when it comes towards you. And you have got opening doors on both sides, and some very, very nice cab detail. You can probably just about see there. Underframe detail isn't too bad. There are pickups on all wheels. So as I can just show you, you, know, you can see the copper on all the wheels there. So plenty of power for the lights to make sure they don't cut out. And you can see through the grill there, and you can for that is a, is a nice proper grill, so you can see through there. And then on the end, so we've got the warning signs, we've got the red, red, <laughs> um, orange uh, camp rail stripe around there. And then your typical medium uh, tension lock coupling, which is an M. It is an M coupling, and you, so you can take it out. But obviously, because of the shape, it, it is a little bit awkward to change it over. But I suppose the only other coupling you really want to change that over to is probably the, um, uh, was it, the Hunt couplings, the magnetic ones. Probably be, probably be a bit better than those, but they're not too bad. But yeah, you can even feel the GWR logo there. Um, it, it hasn't come with any um, etched metal GWR uh, like letters. Um, the other pack, uh, uh, I know the limited edition pack uh, does come with them, uh, Powercast 43187 and 43188, and those ones they did come with etched metal. Uh, uh, letters to go over that, uh, which I and I do have that pack, and I have uh, fitted the metal letters to them. Uh, but, the other, but the other pack, um, four three zero four one and four three double oh five, I don't know if that comes with um, extra metal letters, but I'm pretty sure it does. I think it does, but don't quote me on that. And I'll, I'll obviously find that out when I uh, get that pack as well. So I'll, so I will get that other pack as well. But I think what we need to do is look at is look at Kenny. So. Here she is, and obviously she's much, much heavier because obviously she's just got the motor in her. Bogey's turned quite well. There's a little bit of resistance to start with, but I think it's just the lighting, the you know, cables. And wow, she is amazing. Again, typical opening doors on both sides. A little bit of resistance on that one. Is that one fitted properly? Uh, looks a little bit wonky. It doesn't really want to open that one. Yeah, but my time never really. I suppose it does add a bit of realism having the opening doors, but I don't mind if they don't. And the livery is applied beautifully. I can't see anything wrong with it. Oh, that bogey doesn't really want to turn. 
very well. I think it's just the wires for the lights doing that. Yeah, I can feel a bit of resistance there. I think it's just the wires for the lights because I've had the same thing on another one of my HSTs. I think it's just the lights for the cables getting caught against the like the axle box for this not the axle box, um like the where the worm gear is for this bogey because obviously you have the motor in the centre and that goes out through a drive shaft. I mean it's like a worm gear on top of the bogey here which then in turn drives all the drives these wheels. I think it's just the lights for the the what the lights the wires for the lights that come off here. I think they're just getting stuck a bit against there. But I don't think it's too bad. I feel if it was okay. As long as I don't damage the wires, that's fine. And then you've got your typical sort of port grills on top of there. So it's obviously you can obviously see the fan underneath there as well. It doesn't spin, but at least it is there. And that grill does feel a little bit delicate though. Well, I don't think my other, the other grills on my other HSD is all that delicate. So I have to be quite careful there. But, yeah, what is that to say? Just as good as the dummy. Just obviously a lot heavier. Probably one of the heaviest mod models when we make actually these HSDs. But they do do them really, really well. Don't really know what else to say, really. She, she is amazing. She's really, really nice. But obviously, I think what we need to do is obviously get her running in, so she she hasn't ran before, so what, uh, because, I'll, because of the length of this video, um, I think I'll stop recording here, I'll get her nicely um, run in, and then, then I'll get some shots of her running, and then we'll put some pictures with her, so I'll get her nicely run in, I'll do about 20 minutes in each direction or something, get her nicely run in and warmed up, and then we'll put some pictures with her. So I'll see you in part two.